Hey everyone, and thank you so much for being at this timeless pick a card tarot reading. Recently, I really felt called to simplify, both in my life and in these readings too. I think I've had the tendency to sometimes feel the need to overthink and like lay out complicated or complex, not terribly, but spreads and all these things. And I feel like what's resonating with me in this moment and what I'm hoping is resonating with you as well is just the open readings where we ask spirit for guidance for when you see this reading in this very present moment and to just leave room for the energy to come in and and the space to to just let the magic unfold a little bit. And so I don't want to do too much at this present moment. And that's not saying that in the future I might not be called to revisit creating a little bit more of a complex spread but for right now this feels right and good and so I'm hoping in my deepest heart and soul that that it gifts you with clarity insight uh, truth honesty uh, love of course and joy and pleasure and and just a lightness a lightness. Yeah, so for this reading, I've divided Colette Baron reeds Spirit Animal Oracle deck into three different piles. And what I'm going to do is turn over the top card to reveal the animal spirit that will help you choose your reading. And I've also paired each pile with a crystal as always. So I'll go through these options with you now and then give you a moment to choose. So for pile number one, we have this calligraphy stone, also known as Miriam stone, or I think it's elephant hide jasper or something like that. But it's really, really beautiful. And your animal spirit card is the armadillo spirit with the number three, along with set healthy boundaries. For pile number two, we have this unikite Jasper. And your animal spirit card is the parrot spirit with the number 45, which breaks down to a nine. And watch your words. And for pile number three, we have the white howlite crystal. along with the animal spirit card of the spider spirit with the number 56, which breaks down to an 11, and it says, make your dreams real. All right, I will give you a little bit of time to meditate on these cards and these crystals. When you've made your choice, the timestamps are in the description box below, and I will see you at your reading. Pile number ones, hello and thank you so much for being here. For those of you who chose the armadillo spirit and this beautiful Miriam stone, calligraphy stone or elephant, I should have re-looked this up, but it's elephant something jasper. 
Uh, this is your reading. So the first energies I was being drawn to when looking at your animal card along with this crystal is I noticed that the armadillo in this image is highly adorned. It's wearing four earrings and two, I don't know, like gauge piercings <laughs> up here. And this stone that you chose is so intricate, so beautifully detailed. And I can imagine that every one of these stones is just incredibly unique. It's like a fingerprint. So there is something about expressing yourself as uniquely as your fingerprint, you know, as uniquely as you possibly can. And this could be through fashion, through what you wear, through how you present yourself or adorn yourself, but it could be something a little bit deeper. Another energy that was coming out with both of these stones combined is that there's something really earthy and beautiful about your energy and your spirit right now at least uh, if not always it feels like you carry the deep wisdom of the earth itself within your DNA within your spirit and it feels grounded and it feels calm but there is something about it that feels a little bit under attack in a certain way, which very much mirrors what we see with Mother Earth right now. It's that there are so many people that are unaware that they're really doing, they're not treating her with the reverence that she deserves with how much she provides us. And some people do it unaware and some people do it intentionally. They just don't, they don't realize how deeply she gifts us. And so I think that you are very much aligned with that energy in a certain way. You, you have this beautiful, nurturing, deep quality to your spirit. And I think that that type of energy while so gifting, can be needs to set healthy boundaries and needs to maintain a level of protection in order to do that kind of work that an earthy spirit like yours is called to on this planet. Uh, it needs to set healthy boundaries in order to maintain a certain purity of environment in order to not be taken advantage of to put it plainly and simply because there are energies that there are always going to be energies in life until we learn how to protect ourselves from them how to set healthy boundaries how to recognize those energies there's always going to be energies that try to enter our life in order to strip us of our resources for their own gain so that is just something that I feel like with the energy that you carry, with the beautiful, incredible, earthy, and nurturing energy that you carry, it's just something that you constantly kind of need to keep in mind and be aware of. But it could be, we'll see what comes out in the cards, it could be that you're really mastering this kind of ability to set healthy boundaries depending on where you are on your journey. So as you can see, I have three tarot cards and two oracle, oracle cards for each one of those cards to clarify. And we will get into this first section here. We have the four of wands clarified by strength and innovation with Jupiter and Aquarius. So with these first three cards, it's actually giving me this really exciting energy that 
you've established healthy boundaries. You've learned how to do that. With this column here and just this four of wands being represented as a home where you can, the energy exists within this structure. Uh, it's telling me that you've, you've learned how to protect your energy and maybe the energy of your family, friends, whatever, but most of all, your own energy. You've built a protective structure, even if it is just metaphorical, around your own energy, so which gifts you the space, the energetic space to create and to innovate. I think that your mind is, we picked up on this uniqueness here with the kind of embellishment that we saw, the adornment on this armadillo and with this stone. It's like because you've learned to protect your energy and set boundaries, which I know can be really difficult to keep up and maintain, and you could find yourself kind of vacillating at times, and that's okay if if there are still moments that you go through where you feel like it's not as easy to maintain these boundaries as as other times like it'll all become more consistent with time and with practice but because you've at least for the most part created these boundaries and these structures for yourself to let your energy flow and your ideas to come through. And these ideas are connected to spirit, connected to your uniqueness. And they're so unique. They're so innovative. They're so different. And all you need to do in this space that you've created, it feels pretty patient actually. Because this woman here, she's holding this fishing rod with this kind of, I don't know, medallion on the end of it. It's like when you go out fishing, there's a certain level of calm and patience that you bring with you. And that's part of the delight of the process. It is just the rhythm of sitting and waiting and pulling your line back in and sitting and waiting for the idea to come, for the inspiration to come. And when it does, you're ready. You're ready for it to come into your life and you're ready to kind of hopefully bring it into action. We'll see what else we get here. There is a congratulations coming through for really getting to know yourself on such a deep level and learning through probably through process and evolution and experience how to protect that energy, that beautiful energy that will, by the way, if it hasn't already, be welcoming in other energies internally and externally. When I say internally, like spiritual energies that want to create with you, that want to express through you. But also, because you can see in this Four of Wands card, there's a party going on. And the keys are in the door. Like, there is a certain level of you being open to allowing energies to come into your life, but... It's got to be the right energies. It's got to be the ones that appreciate your depth and your uniqueness. And uh, will gift also their own uniqueness to this wonderful, beautiful party that you are, are throwing. This kind of creative experience that you've built. There's also one other message saying, be strong. Continue to be strong in your boundaries. Continue to kind of be mindful about those boundaries because there is some really cool inspiration coming your way. And so you need to kind of maybe insulate a little bit in order to not have even what may seem like simple energies enter into your, your auric field at this moment because that will kind of mess with the creative juice that is simmering and waiting for you to just reel put your rod into the water and reel it in and what I mean by that is say you live with people and they watch the news every night and you can feel that 
you might be in the kitchen or something cooking and you're not necessarily watching that news but you're definitely in the environment of it and you can feel how it it brings your energy down so it's it's like being really really mindful even of the energies that aren't trying to kind of enter into your into your sphere with intention but they're just around you try to keep that if you can to a minimum so that your energy can stay as pure and ready for this idea this inspiration this innovation to manifest into your life all right so let's hop into the second section here we have the Four of Cups, another four card. Very interesting. Hunger. And secrets. Okay, so right away what I'm getting is there is, I think that you are hungry and ready and waiting and willing and open to create whatever spirit wants to bring into your life whatever kind of idea wants to come through that is is hidden from you right now and you can't see it yet um, but there is a message coming through that patience is your friend in this process and to not jump the gun on just any old idea wait until you feel that fire that hunger that intensity for, for whatever kind of creative idea wants to be pulled into your environment. Not every idea is going to be worth your time or energy. And if you pay attention, if you protect your energy, and that is another reason why it's important for you to protect your energy in these moments, because it will help you better recognize the things that are coming into your life from a really balanced and calm state of being instead of something that's grasping or thrown off balance by external energies or whatever. Yeah, so the Four of Cups, there's in a more traditional deck, but in this one too, you see three cups right in front of this character here. And there's one hovering up above. And this is the one, the one hovering up above, the one that is attached to spirit, the one that is, that has that little bit of something magic. That is the one that you want to give your time to. You don't want to give all of your time, your mental energy to any of these three that aren't going to bring you the complete fulfillment that spirit wants you to have that you want you to have there the other message that comes through with this is that these three cups here that are sitting around you in your physical environment they represent emotional attachments that have run their course. If you notice yourself thinking about the past in ways that keep you in the past, recognize that because that is taking up a lot of space in your heart and in your mind that needs to be open in order to receive this blessing this inspiration. So another reason to even internally set healthy boundaries. Also notice where your mind is going and say, is this, is my mind present right now? Or is it roaming to fantasy land, which is in the future? Or is it kind of clinging to these past things? Is it ruminating over some negative experience I might have had? Just recognize when you're doing that without judgment and pull yourself back to the present moment and rest there. I love that this hunger card has an open circle because that it's like you're hungry and the universe feels that like you're ready. You're, you are willing to accept 
the blessings and the inspirations into your life. But just be patient enough to wait for the right thing. It's, it's waiting for you. You just can't see it yet, but it is so close, so near. So just like we saw in this card, which I just absolutely love the, the metaphor of fishing for this reading. It's just be patient, be calm, be present, and it will come your way. All right. So for your last tarot card, we have the two of wands which really feels so appropriate for this reading. It's again, it's kind of that moment before the thing comes in. All right, we have illumination. And finally, protection with the moon and Aries. I don't know if you guys have heard me say this before. With tiger energy, there's just such they carry such a stealthy energy when they're hunting. And it's like they just slowly and very quietly make their way towards their prey before they zoom in strike and strike. And there's something so beautiful and natural about this, this process. And it feels like it feels co- like a choreographed thing even though it's completely not but it's it's just that it's just that excellent to witness so what I want to say with this is that the inspiration the illumination the blessing the goodness it's going to be undeniable it's going to be really clear and in the meantime in order to maybe calm your mind, because waiting can bring with it a certain level of anxiety depending on what you're waiting for. These cards, there's a couple messages that they're giving me. One is that you're so divinely protected. This is also giving me protective mother energy. And so connecting with mother earth for you especially, carrying your own kind of mother earthly energy will help calm you and center you again while you wait for this illumination to come your way. And the other message that was coming out, because we have the moon in Aries and this two of wands card with this character that is, it's not a bathrobe, but it almost kind of makes me feel like it. I feel like carrying an energy of joy and fun, carrying that uniqueness, recognizing your uniqueness while you waiting doesn't have to be boring. Continue to do the things that bring you joy. Continue to embody the energy that you want to bring into your life. So if you want to create something that will fill your life with joy start by filling your your life with joy in this present moment within your own mind and know that within that space you are protected and within that space is where the illumination has like a free an open window to make its way in it's like get excited about the thing that is coming into your life while not expecting anything, like coming back to that place of calm and balance. Just be like, I'm so excited for when this thing comes into my life. But in the meantime, I'm going to work on this little painting that I've been working on and I'm going to fully, fully be present with it and enjoy it. I'm going to put some music on. I'm going to make a meal that I really enjoy. And I'm going to make this waiting experience the tops, you know, because that is what is going to help you attract this beautiful energy into your life. It may feel like with this two of wands, you're at a bit of a crossroads right now. Like you don't know which direction your life is taking, but that is really, if you can just flip the perspective of instead of seeing that as a scary thing, see that as like the most exciting thing in the world. 
that will be the difference between putting you in a place where the fear continues or putting you in a place where the joy continues. So it's just about making that kind of choice for yourself. But it feels really beautiful. It just feels like this reading is, is giving us the energy of this moment, this beautiful waiting moment before something big comes into your life that is going to be aligned with your current energy. So the big question is, how can you embody that energy right now? I do think that with these two four cards and this strength card and even this illumination card, how it kind of seems like a stable structure in a way, what you are going to be bringing into your life is going to offer this unique version of you a certain level of stability that you have not yet seen before. It's like finally you can be your unique self and feel stable in that. You know, you no longer have to take yourself out of your energy to get by. No, you get to be in your energy and be safe there, be protected there, be gifted there. So enjoy this patience. Enjoy this, this period of time where you just get to be excited about the beauty of the future. The more you can embody this energy again in a pleasing and pleasurable way, the better off you're going to be, I promise. So yeah, that is my wish for you. Enjoy. I love you. Thank you for being here, pile number ones. Keep expressing that unique version of yourself and know that at least one person here is so incredibly appreciative for every detail of the person that you are. So thank you again for being here and I will see you in the next one. Pile number twos, hello and thank you so, so much for being here. For those of you who chose the Parrot Spirit and the Unakite Jasper, this is your reading. The first message that came through with this Parrot Spirit and watch your words It was bringing me to Gemini energy, which is really um, such a fun and playful and imaginative energy, but if not embodied with awareness, can be gossipy and hurtful, uh, especially with words like this card is saying. Also, because you chose this Unakite Jasper, the words I wrote down for this stone were balance and vision. So it's like, I think there's a really cool, fun energy coming into your sphere, but you must maintain a certain balance and integrity so that you don't get carried into a kind of more infantile, negative or low vibe, low minded kind of hurtful energy to yourself or to others. But if you can maintain this balance, I think that you are going to be opening up to such creative juiciness, creative inspiration, creative vision, creative adventure. So just keep those in mind. That's the blanket energy of your reading And we'll get into these cards. So I have three tarot cards clarified by two oracle cards each. And it's just, we're going to just see what messages come through here. So your first tarot card is the seven of wands. Along with ideation. And authority. Mm-hmm. And this is Mars in Capricorn. The cool and awesome vibe that I'm getting from, at least it feels awesome to me, is that I think you're going to be challenging whatever ideas come through for you. It is going to challenge authority, which is why it's so important to be wise with what you create, to be wise with your words. 
because you can easily tip the scale into being petty or or dramatic or whatever and you can lose the essence and the power of the magic of what you're creating so this is excellent it's just like be I think you are going to be receiving or maybe you already have received an idea and it feels good because it challenges this unjust type of authority that has you know taken advantage of people and stripped the earth of its resources or whatever and you have some kind of idea to create something that will maybe illuminate that behavior or counter counteract or counter whatever be the opposite energy of of this unjust authority this card, the Seven of Wands, it feels like you're at a protest. And it's giving me Banksy energy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the artist Banksy. But he uses words in his art, actually. And he does so in a really clever way. And he does it undercover. He doesn't show his face. So it's like the art is not... It is and it isn't about him. He's created a lot of hype around his personality, but that wasn't necessarily the intention. It was always about the message itself, which is a really beautiful thing to keep in mind with this watch your words. Because if you notice your ego taking control, taking the reins, then you are no better than this authority, this unjust authority that you are doing something really magical to counteract, to counterbalance. So the ego is good because it can fuel the fire and and it can bring the inspiration in a way because it's like your personality. But if you notice that you're doing something just to appease the ego... That And the idea isn't the more important thing. Then remember to come back to balance. Ask yourself when you're in this process of, of creation, of magical kind of inspiration. Remember where you want the authority within this process to lie. Do you want it to lie for your own personal gain and needs or is the more important thing the idea itself the creation itself seeing that come through if you maintain the reverence and the honor for the idea and the knowing of its power and its beauty then I think you're going to be good, you know, and you're going to create the thing that your higher self is like, yeah, man, (laughs) we're ready to create. Yeah, and it's hard. I get like when we create sometimes, especially if you're in some kind of like financial strait or whatever, or financial constraint or whatever, but you can think about your own needs a lot. (laughs) And that's natural, but if you notice that is the more frequent, if that those ideas are holding space more frequently within this process, then it, hopefully you can become aware of that and check into the fact that the the process, the creation, the idea is what is deserving of all of your beautiful imaginative energy. So we have the nine of pentacles. This is amazing. This is ha- this is gaining a certain level of independence through what you've created materially. So it's like even if this idea, of course, it's going to carry your style and whatever. And that, like we said, is a beautiful thing. But if the idea maintains the the priority, it is going to gift you. But it doesn't require your worry over that. Because that only strips energy away from the idea itself. 
Yep. <laughs> exactly. Like, put your energy into this idea and do it as honestly as you can because not only is it going to gift you, but it's going to say something so much broader and bigger than you too. And it's going to have an impact that is so lovely, so powerful. So it is, it is so important. It's just about letting this idea come through and not having the fear of what others might say, you know, because there is a little bit something subversive about it. But I think that's where and why it's powerful. So we also have acquisition with the sun in Taurus. And that it just goes along with this, this abundance energy so perfectly. What I'm feeling and what this energy is wanting to, how it's c coming through and what it's wanting to say. It's kind of like bringing this idea through as purely as you possibly can without attaching too much of your ego or your emotion to it is going to be a, a good thing. It's just taking into the consideration that what you plant with this idea is going to grow. So it's taking that moment to just check in and recognize if there's any part of this idea or this creation that could possibly grow into something that doesn't reflect the good intention that you have. It's tricky because, and it does, it feels like you're really walking on this tightrope. <laughs> Because you're doing something that is shifting a paradigm in a way, which is good because, especially because it feels like it's a negative paradigm. But if you go just a little bit too far, you could plant, unintentionally plant a seed for another negative paradigm to come through. So it's, it's really about maintaining maturity and balance throughout this process because you want to create something that yes may question things but they aren't hurtful to they're not intentionally hurtful to others like just check in and make sure that you maintain a connection to love A connection to the purity of your heart. And then, yeah, knowing that some people are going to find your idea or your creation tricky or uncomfortable. But that's also okay. So it's like I said, it's, it's tricky, right? It feels like you're walking on this tightrope because you're doing something that's going to upset the, the system in a way, however big or small. And that's wonderful. Um... You want to do it in love. I think I'm overthinking this a little bit. And that could be a message. That is the message that's coming through. It's like let the idea shine without overthinking it too much. And that will keep you safe. If you put too much of yourself into it, too much of your energy, too much of your emotion, too much of your thought or whatever... It's, it throws this balance off. So simplify as much as you can. Just let the idea come through and let it let, create it, put it out into the world and let it kind of gift you back, but without too much going on. <laughs> I know it sounds like it's difficult for me to get this out and it may be difficult. I hope that I'm getting the idea across. Okay, I'm going to move on <laughs> because you have the six of wands. This is victory. You also have sweetness and loss with Saturn and Pisces. Mm. This is incredible, actually. Saturn is the planet that pushes us to 
release long-standing negative patterns and build long-standing new patterns. So it feels like the work that you've done, the idea that you've put out there into the world, it's brought you abundance, but it really has deeply changed something for the better. And so you can feel good about helping change a cycle to get us out of a certain karmic cycle that we've been hamster wheeling (laughs) in and you've started something new I know this reading might have if it feels to you like it feels to me it feels tricky is the word that I would give it and it's not a bad thing there's a lot of goodness coming out here But it just feels like this creation process needs to be handled with such care, such wisdom, such maturity, and such balance, and such grace. And you're ready for that, or else it wouldn't be coming your way. You are ready to accomplish this. You are ready to create this thing where maybe you weren't before. And it's going to shift a paradigm, no matter how big or small. But I guess the piece of advice is through this creation process, continue coming back home and coming back to center. However you can do that for yourself. Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's exercise. Maybe it's getting into the shower and letting the water kind of cleanse you of any energy that feels like it's out of whack. If you notice yourself getting into a pattern of overthinking or becoming overly emotional, you know that you're not in balance anymore. So it's not only about maintaining the balance, it's in it's being aware of if you lose balance at all. But you're capable of doing that and also what you're creating, it feels really 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 powerful really powerful pile number two is incredibly powerful so don't speak too flippantly or or lose your cool you know come back to that balance and work from there because this really it matters and it's exciting and I don't want you to worry I don't want this reading to make you worry Have fun with this. Enjoy this. But do it in as balanced a way as you possibly can. (laughs) I love you, pile number twos. I'm so sorry if this just came out like a jumbled mess. But I hope that you derived the meaning that was meant for you. And I'm thanking you so much for being here again. I love you. And I will see you in the next one. Pile number three is hello and thank you so, so much for being here. For those of you who chose the white howlite crystal and this spider spirit with make your dreams real, this is your reading. The first messages that come through for me with you is because you chose the spider spirit and this white howlite with the purple on this card and this crystal feeling like it's really connected to spirit yeah that's the message it feels like you're really really connected to spirit right now or you're being called to connect to spirit and this white howlite crystal is a stone that can bring calm so the more you can bring yourself bring yourself into a state of calm and peace the greater and more deeply you will be able to connect to spirit and be gifted with kind of downloads and information that will help you on your path and will help you bring your dreams into reality. I think there's a lot that is um, going to be happening for you. A lot of communication that's going to be going on between you and spirit so be prepared for 
lots of synchronicity to be happening in your life and for possible um, potent dreams. I find too that the, the moments just when you're waking up, when you're kind of in between that space of being fully asleep and fully awake, that is when the really juicy messages come through and you can really like bring them with you in as you wake up. So keep a pen and paper by your bedside if you feel called to do so and write down any ideas that feel potent, that feel important, that feel vivid. Those those will help you uh, along your path. Even if you don't know how yet. I can give you an example that I don't know about a month ago or maybe a little while before even as I was in that liminal space between being fully asleep and fully awake I had this message pop into my mind about the fairies and I swear to you I have seen so many fairy tarot readings on YouTube and just fairy content like around me and it was spirit kind of guiding me to pay attention to these things these things are going to carry further messages so it's just following that muse in a way that uh dreamy kind of feeling it's following those ideas that spirit brings your way and it takes you further and further and further so as you can see, we have three tarot cards. Each one is clarified by two oracle cards. So we're just leaving these things open, like I said in the intro, and see where this reading takes us. So your first tarot card is death. And the message that comes through right away, especially with this image, is kind of haunting. But I don't know if you've ever heard of people who have, have died and been revived, but... That information that they then carry about the spiritual world is so known to them then. And that's kind of what you have access to. It's like if things are falling away in your life, as the death card sometimes represents, you are becoming much, much closer to spirit or you're be being granted access to information that once you you hadn't had access to. So you have consciousness and patience. With the number six, this is Jupiter and Virgo. Wow. Just get this feeling that you're seeing beyond the veil or that you, you're really being gifted the keys to the world beyond. But it's not about putting pressure for this to happen. So if we think about the spider, the spider weaves the web and then it waits for its prey to come their way. It doesn't go out after that. So it's like in this space, I think you're meant to just be in it for no other reason than to see what happens. It's not about expecting anything. It's just about accepting what comes in. You're definitely stepping into a new level of consciousness. And it doesn't have this woman on this card, how her eyes are blacked out. It's like what you are going to be granted access to. It does and it does not have to do with our external world here on this earth. It is definitely beyond this external world. But what you learn in this kind of liminal space can then be brought into this material world to help guide or help lift the collective and maybe 
In fact, you're being gifted with information about the collective unconscious. Or the, is it collective unconscious or collective conscious? The collective conscious. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, this feels so scorpionic. And Scorpio is attached to, to the death card, but this feels super intense. It has the intensity that Scorpio energy carries with it. But it's intense in a very enlightening way, illuminating way. And when you are gifted these certain deep knowings, it's like there is no going back. Life is going to be different after. But in a beautiful way. It's just that you're going to see everything differently. Because your consciousness, you've become much, much more aware. And you can't become unaware. All right, so let's hop into the next set of cards here. You have the Emperor. Surrender. Mm. And enthusiasm with the sun in Sagittarius. Incredible energy. I feel like surrendering control is what's going to offer you the feeling of being stable and it's going to gift you with adventure and with it's like you're you're really opening up and expanding it's almost like there this reading the feeling is that it's super not concrete there are no limits so to describe these energies is a little difficult, but it's because they're meant, you're meant to experience this thing that's happening to you in such a, like, it feels like it's just spiritually pulsing and you're just meant to be in it and it's just going to kind of like guide you along <laughs> That's the best way I can, I feel like I can put it. It's like you're entering into this new world, this new state of being. And it's super stable, but it's because you've completely surrendered or you're being called to completely surrendered and just be open to what happens, to what comes your way. And just knowing that it's going to guide you. <laughs> Let's get into this third set and see what else comes through. I'm curious. We have the Knight of Wands. Which is like forward movement. Quick forward movement. Really fun, exciting forward movement. We have Ghost. It's interesting. You got three. They call them white cards in these decks, but they're all gray. Which makes me feel like it's this, it's really <laughs> intangible, this realm you're kind of stepping into. But there's so much fire there. There's so much excitement there. There's massive transformation there. And it's taking you places. Hmm. Okay, and the last card we have is Mercury in Capricorn with organization. So the first thing I'm being pulled to is how a spider web has a certain organization to it. It is created in such a way that has a pattern, you could say, and it has a function and it has a purpose and it helps to pull energy in. I guess the ghost is just making me think of its space, its openness, but it also carries with it an, enter an energy. It's interesting because the Knight of Wands is not what I, the type of energy that I would think of as being organized in the least. <laughs> and what this kind of feels like, the message that I'm getting here is that you may have been pulled to be super organized in the past. 
We have a Virgo card here, which is all about detailed organization. We have the Emperor here, which makes me feel, make, makes me think of having control, but in the negative aspect, over-controlling. And then we have this organization card. But it's coming along with the Knight of Wands and the Ghosts. And I just feel this pull for you to really, really release control, to release the need to be overly organized to the point where that is taking up all your, your mental space and, and creating the space then by kind of releasing that control, releasing that over meticulousness in order to allow this like kind of other energy to come through and in. Allow yourself to be a little bit more wild, to be much more open to the ethereal stuff that it, it like clearly wants to come in, Cl so clearly. And if you do, I wish I could tell you I knew where, where that would take you, but all I can say is that it's going to take you somewhere and it's going to propel you closer to your dream life but I can almost tell you with 100% certainty based on these cards that it's going to be in ways that you could not imagine but in a good way so it's like open up to the adventure open up to not having control not having your hand t tightly grasped around life and and what you want it to look like exactly but just start living in joy living in enthusiasm opening up to spirit like you've never done before because spirit wants to come in so intensely so heavily so it's like this balance between doing the things that you enjoy, but really making space right now for calm and patient moments because you're going to receive such insight. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's, I think I need to leave this reading here and just trust that you've got the message. Trust that. There's magic happening if you just release and allow right now. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> I love you, pile number threes. Thank you so much for being here. I am sending you so much love and and just like curiosity and excitement for you. It's It's going to be incredible, this thing that you're opening up to. So... Enjoy the shit out of it and I will see you in the next one.